you got your Bibles, we're going to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, start at verse 27. Here's what I'm going to start with. No one believes the Bible anymore. Have I got anybody in here that believes in the Bible? Yes. 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 I won't take that statement because if you're watching my Facebook today, don't put your phone down and don't turn me off for 30 minutes. You can stand it for 30 minutes. I want you to think about this. No one believes the Bible anymore. I hear so many people say God don't heal anymore. God don't save anymore. I hear people growling and complain about the church. Maybe the ones that's growling needs to get saved. Yeah. Quit growling. Amen. Quit complaining. Amen. Maybe we need to face up that we're not all perfect. Yeah. That's right. That we've got a lot of moving up that we need to do. <laughs> I know I do. Amen. 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 So that statement, no one believes the Bible anymore. There's a lot out there that does not. But friends, I, I'm going to give you some names. And I'll give you a copy of this if you want. Sir William Michael Ramsey, Frank Morrison, Lee Strobel, Josh McDowell, Andrew Cole. These are five names of people that was atheists, did not believe the Bible. So they was challenged. Why don't you research the Bible and the Scriptures and see what it says? I know Josh McDowell did. Went all over Europe. You know what he found out? He got saved. <laughs> yeah. yes. Every one of them got saved yes. because they researched it. We yeah. sit with these in our desk and all our, yes. in our house and we don't Take it for serious of what it is. God is getting ready to say something to His Son. He's getting ready to say, go get my people. My people. My saved people. My redeemed people. Go get them. So have you found it? Matthew 24, verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Let me read that again. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, You ever been looking at a thunderstorm and you see that lightning just like that? Just, yeah. Man, yeah. Jesus is coming that quick. Yes, he is. Yes. We won't have time to go pray. We won't have time to just say, Lord, save me. It'll be too late. Yeah. When that clap of thunder happens, yeah. it's over. Right. Come on. It's over. This body is going to instantly die. Instantly, your body is going to fall off. But if you're saved, your soul is going to instantly be in the presence of Jesus Christ as He Amen. takes us out of here. Man. Yes. Now the Lord put this on me so you're going to get it out. Verse 30 says, And then shall appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming 
in the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory. Yes. Can you get that in your mind? Can you get that in your mind for just a minute and think about it? You've heard the thunder clap. All the stars are gone. Moon's not shining. Sun's not shining. But there's an overwhelming appearance of power that's in the sky and it's coming after them that's been born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, you lose gravity. All of a sudden, you're gone with Jesus on that cloud of glory. We need to get this in our mind and our head. This is really going to happen. I don't care what the rest of the world thinks about it. This is really going to happen. And brother, it wouldn't hurt me a bit if it happened right this instant. Woo! Gone! Hallelujah! Look what it says. And he shall send, verse 31, his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words my words shall not pass away. But of the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the day that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving into marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Yes. Thank you for the music, for the piano, for the guitars, for everything that's played here, Lord. We glorify you. Yes. We don't want any glory. We want to glorify you. We want to honor you. Because, dear God, I know that you're coming after this bunch of people right here. Lord, you're coming to gather them up and to take them out of this sinful, ungodly, aggravating world that we're living in. And you're going to take us to the paradise of God. Lord, to be in a place where there's no more sin a place where there's no more death, a place where there's no more sickness, a place where cancer is not welcome. God, to take us to that place, we are excited. This morning we are excited because you're getting ready to come get your people. We praise and glorify you, Lord, and thank you for every blessing this day in Jesus' name. And you may be seated. Can you find Genesis chapter 6, you reckon? Then we're going to come back to Matthew 25. I like to hear them pages turn. (laughs) I've never felt so close to the coming of Jesus Christ that I do this morning. Hearing him sing about the name of Jesus. Yes. Hearing him praising God with everything that's in me. Yes. Oh, mercy. Can you just imagine in your mind when Jesus gets the final word and God says, Go get my people? Can you imagine? Man, everything moved out of its place. Stars don't shine anymore. Moon's not there anymore. Sun's not there anymore. And you look to the eastern sky, but you see a power that's brighter than the sun. You see a power that is so overwhelmingly powerful and it's coming after you. And you don't have just a split second to see it before it takes you up. And you're going to be with Jesus. Forevermore we're going to be with Jesus. No one believes the Bible anymore. They hear this old bald-headed preacher and they listen for two or three minutes and I don't want to hear him. Turn it off. Yeah. Right then. Brother, let me tell you what you better listen this morning. Yes. You better pay attention this morning. Because God's getting ready to do something I'm feeling him all over me. <laughs> Look what it says. 
Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fire, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Ain't that what we're doing today? Yeah. Nobody marries anymore. Even if somebody does marry, they don't get a preacher to marry. They just find somebody that knows how to perform a ceremony. And that ain't worth a dime to me. I want to go before a preacher and get married. Yeah. I want to make sure. You can't get to hope. No, that's at one time was enough, yeah. <laughs> Verse 3 says, The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Amen. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also... When the sons of men came into the daughters of men and bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were men of old, men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that ever imagination, think about that, yeah. of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Yeah. You see that word? And it repented the Lord, Lord, you think the Lord ain't repented today of all the filth that's going on in this world? They've taken the King James Version Bible and they've made it into a funny book. Yeah. All these different things and all these different denominations. Churches don't get set up anymore like this church was set up. They just throw up a building somewhere and start. You can't do that. There's a right way to do everything. We've got to go by God's pattern yes. or we're wasting God's time. Yes. Every imagination of people's mind has got so corrupt in this world. I've never seen so much filth in all my life than what I see in this world today. And you know why Jesus has not come back and got the church today? It's because there's a few churches like this that's still holding on to the true power of God, yeah. that still believes their souls to be saved, yeah. they still lives to be changed, and so he's yeah. waiting till we reap the last harvest. I think about poor Ariana over there in Brazil right now, teaching them natives how to learn about Jesus. Yeah. Lord, when that last word goes out, people, there's something going to happen. That light is going to strike just as soon as that last person hears that gospel and that soul gives their heart to Jesus and we're leaving here. Praise God. I'll be glad to leave here. My goodness. Of all the filth that's going on in this world. And it repented the Lord that He had made man on the earth and it grieved Him at His heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and creeping things and fowls of the air, and it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace yes. in the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> oh, mercy sakes. We're on the brinks of eternity, folks, whether you believe it or not. Turn your Bibles now to Matthew 25, verse 31. Then we're going to go to Revelations. No one believes the Bible anymore. How many people out there that won't listen to the gospel, won't listen to anything they like if the music is not too loud or the music is not uh, offbeat just a little bit. If it's just sweet music, they'll listen to it a little while. But when them bald-headed preachers gets up and starts preaching the gospel, click, they turn it off. Their soul is in jeopardy. They're sitting at their house watching on Facebook and they need some kind of hope to reach to them that they haven't had before. And the Spirit of God may go into them and they may begin to feel something they've never felt before. And they'll get to the point that they would almost give up their beer and almost give up their alcohol and almost give up the sin that they're doing with some other woman. They might almost get to that point when the Spirit of God's dealing with them and they'll turn it off and say, that ain't for me. Yeah. We're at that place, folks. There's more corruption in this world than I've ever seen in my life. 
and people are doing just exactly that, no one believes the Bible anymore. Yeah. I, I, I challenge you, do, do uh, what Josh McDowell did. Research. Start researching yes. these names. Start researching what they went through. Start researching if this, if this is real, live by it. If it ain't real, get rid of it. Burn it. You don't need it. But if it's real, this is your only roadmap you've got to get to God's help. It's the only one. Whether I preach it right or Rookie preaches it right or you sing it right or whatever, this is the only roadmap there is and this will absolutely take you into the portals of glory. And the devil has put so many ideas through my head while I was sitting there this morning to try to derail me. Yes. Does he do you that yes. way? Yeah. Huh? Yes. When you start to read the Bible, yeah. oh, I feel so bad. My eyes are bothering me. And I think anything the devil can do to hinder you, yeah. you need to know that God is dealing with you. You need to know that the devil wouldn't bother you unless the power of God was dealing with you yeah. and try to save your soul and try to pull you out of hell. And you have to accept the Word of God and you have to live up to what God is telling you to do and step up and confess your sins and repent of all your sin you've got and let God wash your sins away and save your soul from a burning hell. You're going to hell if you don't change your way. That's all there is to it. But there is a way out. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. He is the only hope. He's the only peace. He's the only joy. You'll never enjoy nothing else like you'll enjoy when Jesus comes deep inside your soul and washes all that corrupt out of your life and gives you a peace beyond this world. There is a joy that is overwhelming when Jesus steps in. Lord, yes, He is. Woo! Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all His holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, all nations, and He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, yes. inherit, inherit yeah. the kingdom prepared for you yeah. from the foundation of the world. Can you see me up here? If I get right here in Joshua's seat. <laughs> One day real soon, we're all going to be lifted out of this world. Yeah. We're going to come before the King of all kings. Jesus said, all judgment has been given unto me. You're going to step up or crawl up, I'm not sure which. And he's going to look, and he's going to say, is your name written in the book of life? Are you saved by God's amazing grace? Right about then is when I want to hit my knees and say, yes, Lord, I'm saved. He's going to say well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yeah. But these over here, depart from me. I never knew you. Yeah. Folks, this is as dead serious as I know how to get. Yes. Judgment is coming. And there's nothing in this world that you can do except repent of your sins and give your heart to Jesus that will make any difference. You can't almost be a Christian. You can't just come to church when you want to, when you feel like it. 
We must be born again, completely washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. If you find Revelations chapter 20. I've never felt so strong on a message in my life as I do now. I know I'm from not preaching like I usually do. And that's fine too. But I know one thing. That old ship was Zion comes by my way. I'm getting on board. I don't know about you. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting on board. Yes. The captain's going to call your name. You know that? Yeah. The captain's going to call your name. He's not going to call my name when he's looking at Lisa Hubbard. He's going to call Lisa's name. He's not going to call Virgil my name. He's going to call Virgil by his name. And I'm telling you what, you will obey God then. You will step up then. You will say, yea, Lord, here am I. Folks, this is serious. I've never, never been more serious in my life. This world is finished. Finished. He may not come back today, but I sure would look for him in the morning, bright and early. He's coming. He's putting these messages on Wilkie's heart. You ought to listen to Wilkie. I wish you'd come out on Wednesday night and listen to Wilkie. He absolutely peels the bark off of people. And it, it just, it's what you need in this day and time. We don't need foolishness. We don't need a, a, somebody patting us on the back. We don't need somebody to tell us everything's going to be all right. We need somebody to tell us the truth. Yes. And we must Amen. repent of all our sins and we must be born again. We cannot get there no other way. It's foolish to even think that we can't get there any other way. We're going to go to the judgment bar of Christ and we better be ready. Yes. There ain't no getting ready once the rapture takes place. It's over. Have I killed everybody in here? Revelation chapter 20 starting at verse 12. Revelation 20 verse 12. John is on the Isle of Patmos. He's been boiled in oil. They tried to kill him. He lived to be an old man. Couldn't do a thing with him. If God's hand is on you, don't worry about death. Don't worry about sickness. Don't worry about anything that the devil can bring to you. If you're a child of Almighty God, you are surrounded by the power of Almighty God that's able to put down anything that Satan tries to bring against you. You're royal in the eyes of Almighty God. And you need to say, I am I am saved. I am truly saved. Can we do that? I am truly saved by God's power. Let nothing hinder you. Let nothing stop you. Revelation 20 verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead that was in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell was cast into a lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into a lake of fire. Think about this, folks. Every person on this earth has got a soul and a spirit and a body. This body is going to go back to the dust of the earth from which it came. Read St. Luke 16, 19 sometime. The rich man died and was buried and in hell lifted up his eyes. Lazarus was a servant of God. So you think what happened to him? The angels came and carried him into Abraham's bosom, a place of rest. 
How are you going to get off? There is a burning hell right now that's taking place somewhere. And when people die, they're going into that. But at the judgment bar, they'll stand before Jesus Christ. And if he says, I never knew you, can you imagine they leave hell and they go into a lake of fire? My brother-in-law, Floyd Brown, had a dream one time. The bottles with a cork in it, they'd go down and pop right back up through the lake of fire. Pop right back up. Let me tell you, folks, you will scream like you've never screamed before in your life if you go into that place. And there is no coming out. I don't know what you believe. I don't know what you think. I'm going to finish this message. <laughs> you better be saved. Amen. Woo! And you better know that you're saved. If there's an itsy teensy witsy bit of doubt, fix it. Yes. Fix it. Fix it. I don't care who's looking at you or who's shaking your hand or what they think about you. Yeah. Fix it. Amen. Amen. Oh. Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned to her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Here's the tabernacle of God. Right here. Not this building. The tabernacle of God is with you. And He will dwell with them. And they shall be His people. And God Himself shall be with them. And be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain P-A-I-N for the former things yes, are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, These are words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life for him. Amen. Now, be real careful on these next two verses. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But, always has to be a but there, don't you? Danny Robbins preached a whole message on but. But the fearful the fearful what are you afraid of today? 
Afraid somebody will laugh at you if you come to this altar? Afraid somebody will say something about you tomorrow? You didn't really get saved. You just thought you did. Fearful. Folks, I'm telling you, it's a time right now. And no matter what kind of fear you've got, you need to cast it aside. Amen. And you need to turn your life over to Jesus Christ and let Him be the Lord of your life. And forget about all the foolishness that Satan is trying to do to your life. Is anybody in here that's got a perfect life and Satan doesn't bother you at all? I don't see your hands. I think he wrestles with me more than he does anybody in the world. Because I'm going to obey him. Hear that devil? I'm going to obey the Lord. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable murders and whoremongers and saucers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Focus it. If this ain't serious, if this ain't serious, Take it home and put it in the stove and burn it. You don't need it if it's not serious. But to me, it says everlasting life. Yes. It says I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. That I'll go with you all the way even to the end of the world. Yes. Well, what's going to happen at the end of the world? Rapture. Rapture is not even in the Bible. It's a catching away of the saints. Is about to take place. I thank God for these people that's just got recently saved. Yes. yes, sir. But watch out. Victory Missionary Baptist Church ain't the only one in heaven. <laughs> there's Pentecostal, there's Church of God, there's Catholic, yes. there's Hinduism, yes. all kinds of things because. They didn't let tradition stop them. Amen. Amen. I've heard of people that's been put to death because they absolutely believed this and they wouldn't go back up. That's right. So they killed them. What do you think happened to them instantly? Yes. In the paradise of God, yes. just like that. Yes. We have got to believe this and read it every once in a while. Yes. Every day. Yes. And stay true to God. The very moment that Satan tries to pull you away and cause you to do something you know is wrong, that might be the very instant that Jesus comes on the cloud of glory and catch you that way. Ooh, just like that. So I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to heaven. You want to go with me? You can. But in order to do that, you must be born again. That means your life has to change. You have to repent of your sins. Nobody likes the word repentance. You know what I'm looking for? Hey, Lisa, you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for Ronnie to be a deacon in this church. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Right. Come on. I'm expecting it. There you go. <laughs> okay. yes. There's a lot of other people that's out there. Yeah. They're not going to get there if we don't encourage them, that's if we right. don't say something to them about Jesus. That's you're not going to be there. I want to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to ask a serious question right here. Do you really want to go to heaven? I like it. See, see back there. Look back there. <laughs> There is nothing can keep you out of heaven except yourself. The price has been paid at Calvary's Hill. Jesus died on that hill, shed all his blood on that hill. You know what he said? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm going to ask you right now to close your eyes with me so that if somebody wants to come to this altar, they can.
without anybody noticing anything that's going on. Would you close your eyes? Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I've never felt more impressed on a word in my life, dear God, that I don't believe that I have today. Lord, I know that you're coming very, very soon. Maybe before we get out of this building, I hope. But Heavenly Father, there may be somebody here that has not given their heart completely to Jesus. Maybe they've made a confession. Maybe they shook her hand. But maybe they're not fully saved. I'm going to ask you, dear God, to deal with their heart right now. And stir them, dear God, till they will step out and come to this altar and give their heart to Jesus. Lord, I'm going to ask right now in the name of Jesus that the sweet Holy Ghost would deal with that heart of that one that's lost. That's sitting here, has heard all this word, God, and they know it's true, and they won't step out. God, give them the courage to step out and to come to this altar and surrender their life to Jesus right now. Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I don't care if there's somebody here that thinks they've been saved for 35 years and they're feeling the Spirit of God and they feel like they really need to rededicate their life. I pray, dear God, stir them and let them come now and let them get on this altar and repent of their sins and give their heart to Jesus. I ask this right now, Father, in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. And amen and amen. Come on. Come on. The solar's open. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. No matter what your thoughts may have been in the past, right now, your thoughts need to be on Jesus. Your thoughts need to be on the one that can save your soul and give you eternal life. Will you come? Will you come? Come to Jesus. This might be your day. This might be the day that God comes in your life and changes you and transforms you into the creature you need to be. Thank God for what He's doing in this church. You're not coming to me. You're coming to Jesus. Please come. Let him change your life. This life without Jesus is an empty, hard, terrible life. You can see it on TV all the time. Nothing but filth. I see so much on there. I think, how in the world can this world stand any longer? The only reason I can think it's staying any longer is because there's still one soul out there somewhere that needs to be saved by the grace of God. And you might be that one. Wouldn't you like to change your life? Wouldn't you like to have peace in your life or once in your life? Complete peace. Man, that's something that takes place in a person's life when they come to Jesus. There's a worship according to Psalm 51. There's a worship in this place. And the old person gets forced clean. And the peace of God comes to that heart. And you're transformed by the power of God. It's so wonderful. It's actually wonderful. I want to be a preacher tonight. It's wonderful. What God can do in a moment.
14 says this, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Yes. And brother, he's coming again. Yes. And receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Choose this day, the Bible says, whom you shall serve today. I thought that I'd die and gone to heaven. I stood just still outside. I feel a, a fool in someone. The man from within. Feel like it's somebody that said, Have you been born a little more courage than what we've got now? Is your name and this in this world?
you a list of these names. You want to look these people up and see what they did to get saved. I want you to go back and read the scriptures I read today by yourself. Read them out loud to yourself. And I want you to put yourself in the presence of Jesus. John says his eyes were as flames of fire. I want you to see that as you read these scriptures again. And if you're hiding some sin that the rest of the world don't know, need to know about, fall down on your knees, ask God to forgive you, then come and tell us that you've had a change made in your life. That's all you need to say. Yeah, yeah. We'll accept it as that. Yeah. But I'm telling you what, folks. This is dead serious. Yeah. We had better know that we know that we know mm -hmm. that we're right with God. Mm -hmm. This ain't a time to guess. It's a time to know. Right. I'm trying to hush. Come on. Thanks. No, if they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Yes. Come up here, girl. No. I even put the other on this morning. <laughs> So you prayed this morning and you asked Jesus to come into your heart and you feel like you're saved. Can I hear you say I'm saved? I'm saved. Well, I'm saved. I'm saved. <laughs> That's as good as gold right there, folks. <laughs> See how easy that is to give your heart to Jesus? We're proud of you. Yes. Now give Miss Janice your names. We'll see if we can get you some Bibles. Bibles that you actually need and don't throw down. Yeah. What's your name, baby? Albert Thank You get that, Janice? Albert Banner. My ears don't work that good. What's your name, baby? Kennedy Hall. Thompson. Thompson. All right. Everybody hear that? Yes. That is bravery. Yes, yes, that is bravery. Yes, yes, yes. So church, here's how we're going to dismiss today. You're going to come up here and shake hands with these two that have just been born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're here and you still need to pray, yes. I will stay with you until you get satisfied. All right, come on. Everybody will. Shake hands and welcome them into the kingdom of God. Yes. Lord, to minister through them, Lord. 
and tune in. Let them see how good you are. And Lord, give them witnesses to tell other children that it is good to serve a living, resurrected, risen Savior in Jesus' name. Thank you.